Cryptozoology, the pseudoscience surrounding the idea that mysterious, undocumented animals are perhaps still living in the remote oceans, forests, and mountains of the modern world, is tied in closely with paleontology, sometimes to the embarrassment of those studying the latter. Prehistoric animals are some of the most mysterious and outlandish creatures that have ever existed on planet Earth, and as a result many reports of cryptids and unknown creatures tend to describe animals that resemble dinosaurs, marine reptiles, or flying reptiles, lost to the Mesozoic era. Of course, there is no scientific evidence to back up the existence of these claims, and in the eyes of scientists, such prehistoric cryptids are no more real than the fictional monsters of Hollywood. If you search for information surrounding this topic online, you will likely be met with a certain statement. Something along the lines of, only 5% of the ocean has been discovered, so anything could be out there. As vast and as undiscovered as the oceans might be, there is little to no hope that colossal, ancient sharks, plesiosaurs, mosasaurs, or even evolved dinosaurs are out there, lurking in the abyssal zones of our deepest, darkest oceans. There are, without a doubt, many more fascinating species of fish and invertebrates for scientists to discover, but prehistoric animals are just that, prehistoric. Today, we will explore these claims and beliefs, taking a look at the myths and legends that have spurred on such ideas, before looking at the real science behind them. On the way, we will find that life in the oceans is indeed prehistoric, but not in the way that cryptozoology enthusiasts might think. Sit back and relax as we take you on a tour through time, myth, and depth to discover the strange legends of prehistoric life in our modern-day oceans. Some of the most interesting myths and legends that concern unknown creatures are associated with the depths of the oceans. While these range from colossal, ship-sinking cephalopods to bizarre mammalian creatures that resemble humans, many of them take the form of reptilian sea monsters that resemble the ancient marine reptiles that lived in the seas while the dinosaurs roamed the land. These animals are not confined to the oceans either. Rivers and lakes the world over have been reported to contain animals akin to plesiosaurs, mosasaurs, or giant crocodiles. In this segment of the video, we will be taking a look at some of the most famous oceanic cryptids associated with prehistoric life. One of the most famous marine cryptids that fits such a description is Cadborosaurus, or Caddy for short a huge sea reptile that has reportedly been sighted and has washed up on the beaches of North America's Pacific Northwest. Named after its reportedly native Cadborough Bay off the coast of British Columbia, Canada, the animal has been described by those who believe to have seen it as a reptilian serpent with a horse-like head, with lines of humps running vertically along its back. Its limbs are supposedly powerful and webbed, with a fanned tail that helps it push its way through the water. There have been over 300 sightings of Cadborosaurus over the course of the past 200 years, with over 9 reported carcasses and 2 reported captures of babies. All of these sightings have been debunked as mistaken identification of local animals, which range from sea lions to basking sharks to oarfish to cetaceans. Those who have claimed to capture Cadborosaurus conveniently claim to have released it, before taking photos or documenting the catch scientifically. While the animal is popular amongst locals in the region, there is no evidence that it exists in the form of Cadborosaurus, and is most likely a collection of mistaken sightings. Perhaps the prehistoric animal to have had the most popular buzz around its reported existence in the modern day is Otodus megalodon, the colossal shark species known to have lived in the coastal Pliocene waters of North America. Whilst it did not live in the Mesozoic era, as is the channel's main focus, 
It is popular belief amongst internet communities and subset of cryptozoology enthusiasts that this animal may very well live at the bottom of the ocean in the modern day. The topic has even received two big-budget Hollywood movies, 2018's The Meg and its 2023 sequel. While we will delve into the scientific aspects of why the continued existence of Megalodon is near impossible in the next segment, there has been very little justification of the argument from those who believe, other than the classic aforementioned suggestion that only 5% of the ocean has been explored, so who knows what could be out there. Of the proposed evidence that does exist, all we have to go on here are blurry satellite images which show vaguely shark-shaped shadows in the water, and sparse reports from those who might have caught a glimpse of something from a boat or the shoreline. Some of the most repeated and widespread reports of prehistoric animals appearing in modern waters concern plesiosaurs. Across the world, there are countless reports of long-necked lake and sea monsters, which can range from resembling anything from snakes to dragons. Many of them, however, describe animals which look like the long-extinct Elasmosaurus, Plesiosaurus, or Cryptoclitus of the Mesozoic Seas. A good example is the Loch Ness Monster, said to inhabit the vast, deep lake of Loch Ness in Scotland. The monster, which has been sighted infrequently since the 7th century AD, is thought to have been the product of several hoaxes or the misidentification of inanimate objects, such as driftwood or other mundane floating matter on the surface of the lake. The same can likely be said for all of the similar cryptids across the world that resemble Nessie, Champ, Ogopogo, and more. Moreover, many of the depictions of these animals show an animal that stretches its neck upward as it swims, often positioning its neck and head in a clear S-curve above the surface of the water, something that we know plesiosaurs did not do. While Nessie has been a boon to the tourism and culture of the region, it is safe to say that it unfortunately does not exist. The largest animals in Loch Ness today are fish, Atlantic salmon, European eels, and various species of trout. So why exactly is it not possible for prehistoric animals to persist in modern-day oceans and other bodies of water? One explanation is that while we have not discovered any live specimens of these cryptids, if they were real, they would leave many physical signs. Most of these prehistoric sea monsters tend to be either reptiles or sharks, two groups of animals that in most circumstances constantly replace their teeth throughout the course of their lives. These teeth often wash up on shore, often along with carcasses or eggs themselves, allowing us to learn about these animals without actually having seen them. To this day, the only remains of plesiosaurs, mosasaurs, and extinct sharks such as megalodon are fossils, preserved bones and teeth that are millions upon millions of years old. All of these animals vanish from the fossil record after a certain point, allowing scientists to more or less accurately determine when the animal went extinct, give or take a few million years. For these animals to exist in the modern day, we would need to see a reliable continuation of their remains in the fossil record until very recently, something which we definitely do not have. If an animal or group of animals stops producing fossil content after a certain point, we can be certain that the animal or animals in question died out there and then and did not make it to the modern day. Moreover, the extinction event that ended the Mesozoic era and brought an end to the dinosaurs, marine reptiles, and pterosaurs was truly cataclysmic, one of the single most devastating events in the history of life on Earth. Thousands of species were wiped out without any hope of survival, and the impact would have been so catastrophic that there would have been no possibility for large animals such as plesiosaurs and mosasaurs to regain the foothold they had on the world, 
After more adaptable animals such as sharks began to reclaim the waters for themselves. Following the KPG extinction event, we know that the largest animals in the oceans were sharks, and they would not have been able to evolve if the giant marine reptiles were still there to feed on them. Another argument against the existence of prehistoric cryptids in the oceans, which brings forward our last point, is the fact that large animals that aren't reptiles and sharks exist in the oceans today. In the Mesozoic, huge marine reptiles dominated the seas just as the dinosaurs dominated the land. Nothing could grow to be larger or more dominant than them because they were comfortably occupying the top of the food chain as either apex predators or giant untouchable consumers of invertebrates or fish. Today, baleen whales are the largest animals in the ocean. Their ancestors were fed upon by giants such as Megalodon in the waters of the Pliocene, as they could typically only grow to be a certain size. Ancient baleen whales are therefore much larger now than they were when Megalodon was still alive. If Megalodon was still here, baleen whales would not have been able to reach their gargantuan modern sizes, as they would not be the dominant life forms in the oceans. In reality, ancient animals have managed to persist in the oceans despite the mass extinction events and difficulties brought about by evolution in a changing world. The oceans today harbor some of the most ancient lineages of animals known to science, which have origins in various ancestral forms and times. Invertebrates such as cephalopods have existed long before the dinosaurs arrived on the scene and will more than likely persist long after humans disappear too. These adaptable, multi-armed animals can be seen today in the form of squid, octopuses, nautiluses, and argonauts, and can trace their ancestral tree back over 530 million years. Only slightly younger are the crustaceans, ancestors of shrimps, isopods, crabs, and lobsters, which appeared 500 million years ago and are just as plentiful in the seas today as they have ever been. Some groups of fish are truly ancient too. While sharks are much more diverse than you might think, the basic form of sharks as a whole has gone relatively unchanged since before the dinosaurs appeared, some 450 million years ago. They are among the most ancient and largest of fish, and there are without a doubt still some species in the depths of the oceans that scientists are yet to discover. Another great example of this is the coelacanth, a so-called living fossil whose ancestors first appeared shortly over 400 million years ago. These fish, whilst known from fossilized remains, were thought to be long extinct by the time humans appeared on the scene. That is, until one was caught in a shark gill net in 1938, having evaded the eyes of humans for millions of years due to its secretive habitat in deep ocean crevices and caves. Animals such as these are living proof that there are indeed amazing mysteries that are yet to be unraveled within the deepest depths of the oceans. They may not be the gigantic reptiles and colossal sharks that dominate our big screens, but they are fascinating nonetheless. Each of these creatures are relics in their own right, having successfully evaded the attention of human beings for hundreds of years of scientific study. That alone is a mesmerizing feat. While cryptozoology is very much a pseudoscience, that is not to say it isn't an interesting one. The idea of long-lost creatures existing in our oceans and most remote regions today is an amazing thought, but one that must be taken literally if misinformation is to be prevented from spreading. Looking at these mysterious, undocumented creatures as folktales, legends, and myths is recommended. That is, until solid evidence is presented to confirm the existence of the animal in question. 
For now, we will have to live with the fact that extinct animals are indeed extinct, and have been for millions of years. Wonder and mystery still cloaks the natural world, however, and it is perhaps this that should be focused on for now.